Okay. And I'll try to stay. I'll try and stay still today. Give me praise. Who is this 
Mickey Mouse God they talk okay. about. All right. All right. I, I don't know him. All right. I don't want to know this God they talk about. My God. Because my God best though. He can do all things. Yes, he can. Yeah. All things. Yes, he can. Amen. But fail. Yeah. But fail. Yeah. Yeah. He can't do right now. He can't do it. The God that I know has never failed. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let us be free in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, I don't know if you already done this, but we're coming to you live from Agape Community Fellowship. Our overseer is Apostle Ken Smith. He's not in the house, but we just thank God for him. Amen? Amen. So if you got your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus 17th chapter. Let's go start about uh, verse 5. When you get there, say amen. Amen. I just found out, Pastor Ron, that many times what begins to happen yeah. Is God says one thing, uh -oh. and we want to do another. Oh, all right. Uh -huh. That's right. And what I found, that's the only you can tell me what you want. But I'm always looking at Sister Belinda. What does the Word say? Amen. Amen. Does what you say line up with what the Word is saying? If it doesn't, it's a failure to communicate. Amen? Yes. Yes. So here in Exodus 17 and 5, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river. Take in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Now, that, that's a problem for me because... Pastor Ron, you you got to go back and, and take an account, uh, Sister Ann, what would have taken place. Now, they had already been delivered out of Egypt, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And if, if you go back, you, you know the story, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the story. But what had taken place uh -huh. is as they came out of Egypt, you see all these different... Um, all these different feats that the Lord did. Amen. Right? Amen. And really what he was doing with each miracle you saw, it was really attacking their God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's why you see the different things because these are gods that they worship. Mm -hmm. So as he began to attack each one, Sister Belinda, he's attacking their God. Mm -hmm. He's letting them know that their God cannot stand against the true and living God. Amen. 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 So now they sing all this. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Now here's the funny thing. When you talk to people, they will tell you things, uh, Sister Linda, like they were right there, saw all these things, Pastor Nita, that happened, and yet they still complain and they still murmur. They, 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 they saw all this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet still mm -hmm. wonder could God take care of them. My Lord. Still having a problem. My Lord. Can I tell you, though you weren't there, you read about it, you know about it, and Pastor Thelma, there's been times I've got to be there. I've seen it in the spirit. So the same thing today is still occurring, but yet people knew about what happened and still are going straight. My Lord. My Lord. Amen. 
So what I want to concentrate on here is the fact that here in verse 6 he said, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou, and this is God talking to Moses, and he said, And thou shalt smite or hit the rock, and there shall come water out of it. Amen? Amen. Amen? He did that. And the Bible says that the water came out of the rock. And he had to do that, Pastor Thelma, because the people were saying, hey, you didn't brought us out of Egypt. You didn't brought us to the wilderness to die. Is God with us or not? Right? Right. So he tells him to speak to the rock, or smite the rock, hit the rock. And he does, water comes out. But now here's the funny thing that I looked at, that I always focus on, that disturbed me for a long time. That was in Exodus 17 and 6, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now here are the same people, same God, still talking about Moses. When you jump over the numbers, 20 and 8, the Bible says, take the rod, gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before the eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth the water out of the rock, so that I shall give the congregation and the beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses got beside himself. The word doesn't say that, but I'm telling you. Uh -huh. Moses got beside himself. Because it says that Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of the rock? Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and the beast also, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now, you look at it, and all he did was hit the rock. Now, he did talk to the people back. Right? Mm -hmm. But what was the big problem? You, you know what the big problem was? I have found, Pastor Thelma, you can't change the instructions. Now, I, I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care what he did last week, last month, or last year. It may have worked last month. That worked last year. Right. But this year, oh, yes. today, what is he saying right now? Right now. now, before he told them, hit the rock. That's right. That was fine. Uh -huh. But here he told him, speak, speak That's right. to the rock. Uh -huh. God was demonstrating his power. Yes. Moses gets beside himself. Uh -huh. And he takes it on himself. Yeah. To hit the rock. That's right. Sister Terry, he first talked bad to the people, but then he changes <coughs> what God had said. And this is where the problem comes in. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care what you think about it. What did God say? That's right. Any times we change yes. what God said do, That's right. it becomes a problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Evangelist Marsha, if God said don't bring Ricky with you, Ricky's going to be a problem down the line. Absolutely. That's why God told you don't take Ricky. Uh -huh. I, I don't know Ricky either. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. I, I'm just throwing out a name. I don't know Ricky. <laughs> she does not know Ricky like that. <laughs> but what I'm saying, 
We have to be in this place where we're doing things that God did not say do, and we want him to okay it. Simply because we did it. Oh, my Lord. And God is saying, I gave you very strict instructions. Yeah. And you changed it. Right. I, I was listening to, I think it was Apostle teaching uh, not long ago when they was moving the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of my favorite passages. Sure. I love this. Absolutely. Because uh, Evangelist Marcia... David was upset when the cart began to fall and Uzzah reached forth and touched it and he fell dead. But not only was David upset, I heard some people pass around and say it wasn't fair. Now the God that I serve, he's always fair. Now there's some things, Pastor Tom, I really didn't like some things he used to do before I understood who he really was. Right. Now that I understand who he is, I flow with what he does. Right. Now here was the thing when I, when I went back at that, and I'm not going to stay at this too long and jump back where it's going, but when I look at that, here's the thing. God gave them strict instructions, yes, not just how to carry it, so we get caught up in how to carry it. But I think more importantly, he said who to carry it. Right. Amen. <laughs> See, Amen. That's what's more important. Amen. Not how to carry it. See, because Ooh. he didn't die because of how to carry it. Uh -huh. He died because he wasn't the one to carry it. Yeah. Right. If you guys remember back in the Old Testament, what used to happen, and, and this, this, uh, what they were carrying, the Ark of the Covenant, it represented the holies of holies. Right. Right? right. Now, if you remember, only the high priest, not just the priest, right. only the high priest went in the holy of holies. Amen. Because it's the most holy place. Yeah. Now, when the yeah. high priest went into the most holy of holies, they had to tie a rope around his leg. Right. 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 They had bells on him. Right. What, why was all this going on? Because... The bells indicated that he was still alive. Right. You heard the bells ringing as he moved around. Right. Now why is the rope on his leg? <laughs> because if he falls dead in the holies of holies, you can't go get him. Right. I can't go get him. Why? Because we too will fall dead right beside him when we walk into the holy of holies. What did they do? As the touch the most holy of holies. How can anybody be upset about that, Pastor Ron? He fell dead because it was like walking into the holy of holies. You've already been instructed. It's not for you to touch. It's not for you to go there. You don't have permission. Who are you to change Amen. what God said? All right now. So you're going to go into the most holy place. And you're dirty. Mm -hmm. You're filthy. Oh my Lord. And you're going into the most holy of holies, or you're touching the most holy thing. Jesus. And then, why are you upset? Because he died. Mm. Can, can I say this? I, I grew up in what they call old school. Anybody in old school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor Thelma, in the day, they have what you call time out. Okay? And in today, uh, Sister Shanice, what they do, they, they spank kids sometimes on their hands. Okay? But you can't do too much spanking because you might go to jail. Right, right. But I didn't grow up in a time of spanking. I grew up in a time when they called whooping. All right, all right. I, I, I had no idea about Right, right. That's what they did in school. They whooped you. Yeah, yes. I got whooped. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And I tell you one thing being whooped made a believer out of you. You better say that. Amen. You know, it didn't take me long. When I found out 
found out they would really hit you, mother, they didn't have to tell me too many times. Amen. Now, as long as they was talking and they wasn't a hitter, yeah. I wasn't concerned about you. Oh, but what I learned with my parents, <laughs> they was hitters. <laughs> Mother, I think, knew Bruce Lee or something. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be across the room yes. and you say something. Now, I never had this done to me, but I've seen it done many times. <laughs> Mother would take your shoe off. Oh, yeah. She hits you in the yeah. face with that shoe so quick yeah. from across the room. <laughs> Today they call that abuse. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do, Pastor Wayne. Now, some things I didn't like either. I thought was a, a bit much. But what I learned in all of that, is I too disciplined my kids when they came up. Mm -hmm. But I disciplined them not to hurt them, mm -hmm. but to break the things that they were doing because I love them. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And if I don't do it, when they get out in the world, the world's going to whoop them, but when they whoop them, they don't love them. That's, That's right. 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 And here's the thing that I focus on the most, Evangelist Marshall. I never have whooped a child without them asking me to. Somebody said, what? Reaction. <laughs> Sister Linda, I would be wrong if my child or my grandchild asked me to whoop them and I didn't do it. I'd be a bad grandfather. Right? And as much as I hate to whoop or discipline them, right, right. sometimes it becomes necessary yes. when they keep asking me to. Yes. Yes. Right there. And if they ask me enough time, something has yeah. to be done. Yes. 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 I don't want to, right. but I have to, yes. to ensure, because I love them, Amen. that I will deal with them rather than somebody Amen. else. Amen. 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 What is all that about? What I'm saying to you, God has to deal with us sometimes. Oh, yes, yes, he does. And the reason that he deals with us is because he loves us. Yes, yes, he does. God is such a loving God that what I found, when you let people get away with things, Pastor Thelma, everybody begins to do it. People get mad at me about this, but I, I have to say this again. We live in the monkeyest generation I've ever seen. <laughs> Y'all laughing. What do I mean by that? Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. I tell you, if you can get 30 people to walk around wearing one shoe, it'll become a fact. You're yeah. right. You're right. That's I've never seen truth. anything like it. That's That's the truth. Truth. So, if God doesn't take discipline, then God is much wiser than us. Amen. God gave a command. Yeah. And the command was not followed out. They done what they wanted to do. That's right. And because they done what they wanted to do, it had to be punishment that took place. Now can I tell you that God cannot lie. Amen. 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 So if God said something and he didn't do it, what would that make God? Come on, y'all, act like you don't want to say it. I'll say it for you, it would make him a lie. God cannot lie. God gave some instructions that were supposed to be carried out. They didn't carry the thing out, and God was, was trying to show them. God wanted to present at that time his power. He didn't want him to hit the rock. God wanted to let everybody know, not just them, us today too. Amen. That all he had to do <coughs> was speak. He didn't have to raise his voice. He didn't have to raise his hands. He just spoke. And it was done. How was the world created? He spoke. The Bible says the world was formed 
Because God spoke. Yes. Many times we're, we're looking for something to happen or God to do things in a certain way. And God wants to, to let us know he's God all by himself. He constantly put things before us to let us know that I'm God all by myself. Yes. I don't need any help. This is the way it's going to be. Yes. This is what time it is. And I found because God doesn't instantly discipline us, it causes us or it makes us believe that God is not watching or, or, or Pastor Nita, we can do whatever we want. Uh -oh. Amen? Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, God is a God that he even tells us ahead of time what's going to take place. Yes, and when we don't follow after what he's saying, right. it causes a problem. Mm -hmm. What kind of problem? Some of the effects of what you're seeing today, God already foretold that it would happen. What is our position? Our position is to pray. That's right. Yes. Our position is to hear God. Yes. A lot of times we get moved by what we see. Mm -hmm. right. And because of what we see, Pastor Thelma, it causes us to move into a different place. Right. It causes us to get just like Moses did and get beside ourselves and try to do something a different way. But our job is to hear from on high oh, yeah. and carry out the instructions that he has given us the way he said to carry them out. Right. You don't get to change the instructions because you don't like the way he did it. Come on, is it just me? Can I tell you, many of you that, that, that know me know that I was single for a long time. Right. And when I say a long time, it's a feel <laughs> a long time. <laughs> Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I like marriage. When I look at the word, that's dumb. The first time God said it's not good, he said it's not good that man should be alone. He was talking about me. Come on, maybe it was just me. So for me, no, many people, they don't mind. And that's fine. But Sister Belinda, here's what I found. I look around like everybody got somebody but me. <laughs> Come on, y'all talk to me. A year went by, two years went by, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> nine, ten, change in Let me tell you why. Because even in that time, I found God was perfecting things in me that I didn't even need, that I didn't know needed to be perfected. All right, now, Pastor Wayne. All right. Are you with me? Yes. 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 Somebody will say, well, I'm perfected. <laughs> That lets me know right there. You, you know, are not going to <laughs> And I felt the same way. God was the problem. Did I do something wrong? I know I was, I was, I done a lot of stuff back in the day. Am I being punished for that? No. No. God has a time, yes, a does. place yes. for everything. Yes, he does. God's going to do it his way. Yes. Amen. 
And one of the things that God is doing for each of us, I don't care what it feels like you're waiting on. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't care if it's, it's money. How, whatever you're waiting on. The thing that you have to wait on is him. He knows what he's doing. Right. And what I found out is so many times we begin to get tired because things are taking so long. Mm -hmm. And you begin to get tired. You try to do it your own way. Moses, if you go back and, and read about this, actually what happened with Moses, Moses got tired of the people complaining. Moses was looking at the fact of God just delivered you out of Egypt. You was in bondage. And God not only brought you out, but he brought you out with a strong hand. God showed you all these things. Do you know? Now imagine this. I thought about this. Here was hell. And the hell was falling. Now, Anybody ever seen high hills in Texas? Yes. You seen that? For those of you that don't know, we, we were going down there one time and started hailing, and the hell started dropping down like balls as big as my fence. And when we first was coming through there, we saw all these windows broke out on people's cars, hotels, windows broke out. I thought it had been a shooting. It was the hell, knocking out windows, right? Back here, one of, this is just one of the things that took place. Not only was the hell coming down, and they, they were telling you, 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 you have to go inside because the hell is so big that it, it can kill you. Not only is it so big, but this hell, it was on fire. Are y'all with me? But here's what God did. Sister Daniel, God said, just to let you know that this is not by chance or coincidence, about this time tomorrow, it's going to begin to hell. Are you with me? He's, what time is it now? 10.35. So he was saying, about this time tomorrow. So on Monday about 10.35, I'm going to cause it to hell. Not only am I going to cause it to hell, but just so you don't think it's by accident or coincidence, over in Gershon, I, I, no hell is going to fall. Sky is going to be clear. And, and over there, that, that's where my people are at. Over there, what I'm going to do no animal, no person, none of them will be affected by this. They won't even see it. But over here in Egypt, if you don't bring your cattle in, they're going to die. If you don't bring your children in, they're going to die. Don't leave anybody out in the field working today. And do you know some cattle died? So people die. Come on. Have y'all read the word? Yes. 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 Now you've already had the warning. Yep. Can I tell you this? I'm going to tell you about the shift in the spirit in a minute. But before I get to the shift in the spirit, I want to tell you about the warning sign. Like before they came out of Egypt. Now if you watch this, God said in his word, in the last days, there shall be perilous times. Yes. Right? Yes. Men will be lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Blasphemers, boasters, prideful. Now, when I look around, Pastor Ryan, Ooh. is it a possibility we could be in the last days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of 
according to the word. But before everything ends, all that sounds kind of bad and bleak, didn't it? So let's talk about the shift. It's been a shift in the spirit now. And I know people be talking about, oh, I'm tired of hearing this, this, this. Here's the thing about God that I've, that I've come to find out, Pastor Nita. God takes time with things sometimes for us. Yes, yes. God is trying to yes. get us many times, Pastor Ron, that we can get in position that we don't miss stuff. Yes. That's how good the God is that we serve. Yes. And here's the thing, he don't want anybody to miss it, but it's some people. <clears throat> that feel like they have time, that they they still trying to change the rules <clears throat> and do it their own way. My Lord. Now, Sister Yolanda, because they're still trying to do it their own way, they're going to miss what happened in the shift. Are y'all with me? Yes. yes. If you miss the shift, don't get mad at God. Anybody ever been in a relationship? I know I'm jumping. Yes. Man. You ever been in a bad relationship? Yes. You ever been, I don't care if it's a, uh, you're dating somebody, business, I don't care what kind of relationship it is. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten a relationship that was bad? Yes. And God told you ahead of time, don't do it. Yes. And you've done it anyway. Yes. yes. And then after the fact, you mad at God. <laughs> how can you be mad? Sister Samantha, how can you get mad at God after he told you don't do it and you do it anyway? What is all that about? God has been telling us to do some things. Some things we haven't been doing even in the Bible. We get mad at God, evangelist Marcia, because it's not flowing. Here's what I've learned. If you're doing everything God told you to do and it's still not flowing, don't get mad, don't get upset. Do you know why? He's just preparing you. So sometimes, and, and I found out I, I, See, I start trying to find out a whole lot of stuff because time bothers me. Maybe I'm alone. When something takes too long, uh -huh. I had to learn patience. Yes. All right, all right now. Are y'all with me? Yes, yes, yes. I didn't have patience before. But Sister Samantha, being by myself, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, not eleven, twelve. Being by yourself for a while. You get to know yourself too. That's right. Amen. Not only do you get to know yourself, but you get to learn patience. Yes, you do. You get to learn because you get mad, God's not going to move because you got mad. No, he doesn't, man. What you begin to learn is God show me how to flow and stay where you want me to. Amen. You got to come to a place where this is not Burger King. You're not going to have it your way. They would laugh at me when I was a kid. I'm telling myself I was the youngest in the house, Minister Phil, and when they would upset me. I wouldn't do what I wanted them to do. You know what I would tell them? I'm just going to bed. <laughs> now when I tell them I'm going to bed, no, they wouldn't let me go to bed. They all oh, go on and give it to me. Now that was a bad thing. Yes. It was a very bad thing. Yes. Because in life, as I got older. Not like that. I didn't say it, but I was just going to bed on uh -huh. And they didn't care. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You develop.
develop habits in life because they weren't worked out of you. It's not good to spoil the kids. No, you're right. Because one day you got to stop spoiling them. Yeah. Yeah. When you stop spoiling them, mm -hmm. then it feels like it's not fair. Right. Are y'all with me? Yes. So you can spoil them to a certain extent. But at the same time, you must teach them discipline, values. You must give them instructions. So later, they don't want to just go to bed. Amen. Because <laughs> when you find something works, you keep using it. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. And it was a bad thing, so many things keep falling around here. <laughs> So, we have to come back to this place. God taught me. It's not about me. Right, right. And I'm the first to tell you, if it's not about me, it's not about you either. Right. Right? Right, Amen. right. So what I've learned is about Him. Amen. It's about God being glorified in all that we say, all that we do. Right. So we got to come back to this place. We can't keep changing things, changing the instructions because we don't like the way God is doing it. We have to come to this place just like he told Moses the first time. He said, smite or hit the rock. And then the next time he told God, did I do that too? Or just moved on? <laughs> <laughs> so what you find is God is such a loving God. And because God knows everything, Sister Samada, mm -hmm. He put things in place or position sometimes. You may not like it. You may not like how it feels. Right. You may not like how he does it. Mm -hmm. oh, well. But I can tell you today, I not only trust God, mm -hmm. but I now believe he knows what he's doing. Amen. 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 And Sister Belinda, can I change that and say I don't believe he knows what he's doing, uh, but now yeah. I know no. that I know that I know Amen. that he knows. Right. What he's doing. Amen. 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 And when somebody knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. it's best to get out the way and let them do what they do. Yes. 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 So I've learned, let me get out the way and let God yes. be God by it. So he don't need my help. So what I need, Evangelist Marshall, is to follow his instructions. Even sometimes the words he'll give you. Be like, God, can we have something more uplifting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't get to give you what I want. Mm -hmm. I get to give you what he tells me. Mm -hmm. right. And then I always have to go back and pray. And ask God, Pastor Dora, right. if I missed you in the presentation, yes. Yes. forgive me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, I'm not concerned about, let me say this right, because there's some things I want. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. Amen. It's yes. things that we want. Yes, yes. <laughs> But I've learned enough to know now. I want what you want. Amen. For me. Amen. And the reason why, if I get what you didn't give, what I get will be a problem. Thank you, man. 
Yes. I don't want it in, in this world. The Bible says you shall have tribulation or right. ellipsis. Right. So you're going to have it. Right. But any problems that I have, mm -hmm. let them be. Because I'm walking where I'm supposed to. Thank you. Yeah. In other words, when we get over in James, when he says, count it all joy, and I've said this many times. When we're walking where we're supposed to and something comes at us, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Because things are supposed to attack you. Mm -hmm. But if I go and invite the devil in, oh. Yeah, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> If I go and invite him in and he starts tearing stuff up, I can't get mad at God. I can't even get mad at him. <coughs> Pastor Ron, this was my doing. See, many times our choices is not the choice of God. God will put in you what he wants you to ask. When you ask what he puts in, it's called agreement. Many times what we're asking, what we're doing, what we're saying, we're changing, Sister Belinda, what God has said. God said, do it this way. I don't like it this way. It feels better if we do it this way, just like they've done with the car. Well, it's easier if we carry this way. Have nothing to do with easier. Us, it feels like, okay, I'll catch it. I told you, you're not a priest. Why are you touching this? Are you with me? Yes. I said all that to say this. God requires our obedience. Yes. And in this shift, your obedience is going to be required even more. That's right. Because God needs a people in this hour. God is calling forth his remnant. And can I tell you, it is many people that are saved. Now stay with me here. Many people, Evangelist Marsha, that are saved, but you can't tell. Did y'all hear me? Yes. You can't tell. And because you can't tell, it's like the blind leading the blind. So they're teaching people the wrong stuff. So now what happens when he talks about we're in the last days? Mm -hmm. Do you know the next thing to come after this shift? You know what comes after that? The rapture. Mm -hmm. I like something that my wife said because she was in school and one of the things they were talking about, are you rapture ready? That's right. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. Many people are saved. But they're not rapture ready. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means I've changed the instructions, I've changed the rules, and so much that here God is, is, is rapturing his children off, and I'm left behind That's right. because I changed the rules, That's right. because I've done it my way, because I wasn't walking where he called me to walk. I wasn't doing it his way, I was doing it my way. And because of that, because I've changed the instructions that he's given me, he leaves me That's right. to take the test one more time. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Oh, but I'm saying mm -hmm. right. that's the reason why you get to take the test one more time. Mm -hmm. Because you're saved. Jesus. But the truth of the matter is, you should have went the first time. Amen. Because when you miss it and the rapture occurs, all those prayer warriors and everything, they're gone. So you're going to be living in chaos. Christians running for their lives. Now Christians have to really seek God. And now, Pastor Anita, now they have to do it. God's way. That may require your head getting chopped off. That's right. That's right. Are y'all with me? Yeah. 
So now you have to, to deal with something that was never intended for you to deal with. But you weren't rapture ready because you were world friendly. Oh. <laughs> and the Bible says, if you're friends with the world, it's enmity or hatred against me. Absolutely. So he says, you're either with me or you're against me. Last thing before I take my seat. I should be able to tell who you are Amen. by the Spirit. Amen. And even if I'm not in the Spirit, Evangelist Martian, I should be able to look at you and know something's different. Yes. But if I'm in the world and you look just like me, you act just like me, you do just like me, how can I tell who you are? If you're walking around with a white cane and I think it's a red strip at the, at the bottom, if I can see that much, I can see enough not to follow you. All right. All right. Amen? Amen. Amen. But the problem is happening that we're following after things. Jesus. And yet God is speaking, but we're listening to another voice. Right. And we're following after things that's causing us to change the instructions that we've been given. So we're not walking where we're supposed to. We're walking where the enemy has called us. Jesus. So we have become friends not only to the world, because to be a friend to the world is actually to be friends with the enemy. That's right. So we're walking now, Evangelist Martian. We're walking. Before you turn that off, walk with me one minute. I need you to walk with me one minute because you're going to represent the enemy today. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And what we have done, we have locked arms. Uh -oh with the enemy. Mm -hmm. right. And we're walking right along with the enemy. Yes. And the Bible's funny. You know, it, it's kind of like, you know, even when you go to the gas station today, Marshall, do you know these people won't give me no gas unless I pay them? <laughs> <laughs> Some of these people just funny. Mm -hmm. But when you lock arms with the enemy, mm -hmm. now watch this. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So how am I walking with the enemy and I'm doing all right, I'm feeling all right, and the Spirit of God is in me and I'm walking with the enemy and I'm walking together like we're friends. Now I can understand why the enemy wants to walk with me, but I can't understand why I want to walk with the enemy. All right now. All right now. How can we walk together unless we be in agreement? But we have locked hold with the enemy, and we're walking together like we're one. If I can say, it's not the first time I've heard this, but somebody may say they don't like me, somebody may say they don't like you. I don't get upset, you know why? Because I know the reason why you don't like me, you don't know my daddy. Right. And if you don't know my daddy, how can you like me? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't like me, that's because you don't like my daddy. And many times, even when we have the same daddy and you still don't like me, now you need to check your relationship with your daddy. It's right now. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I've learned I may not like your ways, but I love you right. because you're my brother. Mm -hmm. We're the same family. We got the same DNA. Not because the color of our skin, mm -hmm. but because the spirit that lives within. Amen. So Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we pray that all has been said and done, that it glorifies you. We pray that anybody listening on today that don't know you, that they today would seek your face. I always like to say in Romans 10 and 9, it says that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you too could become me and this brothers.
part of our family. Because you too can be saved. Amen. 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 Amen